Peace and blessings. It's the one and only Ray Imperial. Imperial Flame Kennels. Back with a quick video. Uh, just wanted to take a minute to say uh, apologies are in order. Uh, haven't been as vocal on this channel as uh, perhaps even I would as I would like. Um, pretty soon we'll be doing a live. Not sure when or what that's going to look like. It might even be tonight, depending upon how I feel. But my apologies go out to several groups of people. Number one, to my brothers in the Pitbull fraternity, right? Pitbull community. Um, especially those of you who are Uh, you know, posting your videos on YouTube, so forth and so on. Um, again, I haven't been as vocal as even I would like. Um, that's not through uh, my lack of attention or support to your efforts. In fact, uh, I have three different profiles on uh, YouTube. And quite likely from time to time, you'll just see that uh, you're getting a bunch of likes from one of those profiles or you know it's just kind of my way if it you know I'll subscribe from all three profiles I'll like from all three profiles I may not be able to comment as much as I like because I try to uh just kind of get it in in mass you know um uh you brothers are doing a hell of a job you know what I mean you you uh with the dogs and you know just general conversation man keeping the people abreast of what's going on and, you know, uh, just express, expressing views as, you know, men on the move, so to speak. The other group I would like to apologize to are the young people, commonly called Gen Z, right? And I want to apologize to y'all because the generations prior to you have definitely dropped the ball you are living in chaotic times that are threatening to really uh, present you with a world that is uh, almost a, it's a world on fire. It is a world on fire. Um, the current situation and state of affairs is such that, uh, in my estimation, this country is burning. This country is burning, and uh, you guys are inheriting that burning atmosphere at a time when you really should be, you know, young, carefree, and enjoying life, you know, doing all the things that young people do. So, the fact that... Uh, this is taking place is not something that happened over the last generation or the last two generations this has been boiling since you know 60s and 70s you know the 80s uh and ultimately everything is coming to a head uh, when i hear from my young gen z people man there's a certain frustration there's a certain just ex exasperation about the uh, about the entire matter. Boom! Let's go. So, apologies are definitely in order because uh, you guys have just uh, stepped into a world that is batshit crazy. And then I would like to apologize to the conscious community, right? As they say nowadays, those who are woke. You see, I've been studying these issues of uh, political malfeasance and basic 
just mismanagement, right? Um, for easily the last 30 years, right? I would even go so far as to say mm, the last 35 years. Now, I may be dating myself with that, but I'm fine with that. Um, the idea of Christian white ring, white right wing nationalism uh, or right wing Christian nationalism is not new. It's not something that was born yesterday. It was not something born during the pandemic. I was aware of this movement and uh, its uh, philosophies, its uh, motivations, at least as early as 1996, when I received something of a political education from Brothers Man who had been boots on the ground in the struggle. I haven't really said much about a lot of this stuff. I've just been studying, watching, observing. Um, never been one to jump to conclusions and assume conspiracy theories, etc., etc. But I have been one to uh, note patterns, pay attention to developments, and you can't tell me at this point that there is not a deliberate effort by call it the unseen hand right to literally push this country over the edge policies which have led to the just mass dissatisfaction of the average American I can't believe our leaders are just that dull and that inept that they can't see what the cause and effect relationship is going to be in some of the policies that they have advanced. Case in point, uh, during the Iraq War, the Persian Gulf War, uh, and thereafter, the United States imposed sanctions on the country of Iraq, right? Economic sanctions. Now, this was after the so-called war, right? And the result of those sanctions and economic embargoes literally led to the death of over a half a million Iraqi children, right? And that's something that was acknowledged right it was definitely um it was definitely spoken about uh and the media covered it right the uh secretary of state i believe at the time geraldine albright was interviewed on one of the major media outlets and the question was asked like was it worth the life of a half a million iraqi children and she said flat out, yeah, we felt like the, 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 the ends justified the means. And yeah, so that's how they, you know, that's how they move. So they, they knew that these economic sanctions had literally caused the death of so many. And the fact that they continue with these types of policies in places like Venezuela, you know, uh, they they attempted to do the same thing to Cuba. Uh, in fact, they uh, they did something extremely similar to cause the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union, right? So, what we see today is the fact that Russia is definitely, they, they've gotten smart about it, right? They know the tricks, they know the game, and so they've done what they've done what they needed to do in order to circumvent and learn from history, right? Learn from their very own history and interaction with this country. 
So fast forward to a country like Venezuela, where we've had economic sanctions and embargoes in place since uh, at least for the last 20 years, right? That oil rich nation, which has the largest oil reserves in the world, is now, uh, it was once the most prosperous country in South America. But due to the economic embargoes and sanctions, uh, United States literally uh, appropriating assets, you know, just taking over Venezuelan assets and reassigning them to who they chose and, you know, not acknowledging Venezuelan elections and claiming that they, they're, you know, they have their own president. Like the United States literally tried to claim that somebody else was president of Venezuela besides who won the election. So it led to a situation where today in Venezuela, you'll have a young mother with a four month old who has to stand on a line from literally the night before the store opens in hopes of getting pampers for her child, right? Only to find that by the time she gets there, there are no pampers available. And the only thing that she can possibly get is flour. Like she can't even buy bread, she can't buy meat, she can't buy any of these things. So, economic embargoes and sanctions have definitely been uh, a weapon, right? They, they, uh, economies have been weaponized, right? And literally left many uh, smaller countries with uh, more fragile economies in dire, dire straits so that the people, the idea is that these economic sanctions are supposed to drive the people to a point where they overthrow the government. <laughs> well, most people just say, to hell with this, I'm going to go where the grass is greener. And that brings us to the current day migrant crisis. So the United States has done this against Haiti. It's done this against uh, Venezuela. It's done this against uh, uh, other countries. And so this is basically what we are dealing with today. These people have fled their countries and they've come here. Um, and U.S. policy has allowed them in right says oh your government is no good you're seeking asylum come on over here now that to me is literally undermining those who have uh who were born here in america and you know are considered citizens of the government and let me let me be clear about something I don't buy that whole this is my country thing. And I don't buy it because this country was stolen from the original inhabitants of this land. Right? This country was literally uh, born out of a certain amount of just rape, destruction, and an attempt to literally obliterate a culture that had done nothing to the Europeans who came here with that attitude. So to all my right wing Christian nationalists and my black conservatives who seem to support that mode, let me say we are all immigrants, especially those who consider themselves white and owners of this land. You're an immigrant. Your parents were immigrants. So there's no need to suddenly look at those who are here now as if they are somehow intruding or, or uh, uh, you know, invading your home. All that talk about telling blacks to go back to Africa and telling migrants to go back to their country. Eh. You could stand to take your own advice. 